So in this episode, we're going to take a look at how to file for a mechanics or storage lien in the state of Virginia. And this is specific to Virginia, but it can also give you some basic information about other states because most states have about the same type of procedure. And we're going to look at the official form for Virginia and also look at who qualifies under the code of Virginia, um, who can file for this type of a mechanics lien or storage lien. And if you notice on the application, it specifically says mechanics or storage lien. It covers both. Some states you have to do either a mechanics lien or storage or towing lien. And the form tells some of the information about how to do this. We're going to jump down to the instructions first. If you notice, there's different procedures whether the vehicle is 12,500 or less, or 12,500 up to 25,000, or 25,000 and more. But basically, first, you have to apply for an MSL vehicle transcript. MSL, as they use it in this document, is Mechanics and Storage Lien Vehicle Transcript. And that's done on this form. Vehicle record request, right? And you have to sign an affidavit saying, I'm requesting DMV information from its files on the vehicle described above. I will only use this for this mechanics lien. I'm not using this information for any other purpose. Here's why that's important. You will need this information to do some of the steps for your mechanics lien. This information is protected under federal law. This is just like your credit report or driver's license information or bank account information. The DMV considers your name and address that's on your title record or the owner of the vehicle to be private information. They don't give it out to casual inquiry. So by signing this record request, you're saying, I want an exception to that privacy rule. So you have to do that first. Why do you have to do that? Because you then have to notify all vehicle owners and lien holders by certified mail of the intent to sell the vehicle. You have to notify them by certified mail. And you have to use the name and address that's on that vehicle transcript. You can't use a name and address you have on your repair order or from what the customer told you or something you looked up online from their Facebook. You have to use what's on the vehicle transcript, right? that protects the owner. Um, if the owner of the vehicle is a non-resident or the address is unknown, then you have to post a copy in three places and it tells you what the places are. But that's only if they're out of state or you don't know the address. If you just skip over step one, apply, you know, not getting the transcript and then you just post this notice, it's gonna fail. You're not gonna get approved for this, right? Next, after that, you must hold the vehicle for a minimum of 30 days. Then you must advertise the date and time of the auction, along with the terms, in at least one public place, meaning that in a newspaper, online, at least 10 days prior to the auction. Then once sold, provide the purchaser documentary evidence of compliance with this, or just give them the title that you received. If it's more than $12,500, then you have to do more steps. You have to petition the district court in order to get the vehicle sold. Be granted that petition, and then you hold the auction. But the auction has to be held by a sheriff, not by you directly. You have to sign an affidavit that you complied with all these steps. And if you sold the vehicle at auction, you put the purchaser's name, the sale price, and then you certify that you have applied to the DMV for the information, held the vehicle for 30 days, made the notices, and arranged for the vehicle to be sold. You have to check each one of these boxes. It says right here, check all boxes, sign it, and it has to be notarized. Because you have to follow these steps. If these steps aren't followed, a title will not be issued. So 
you notice this is all under VA code 46.2-64401. Well, here's what that code is. Effective January 1st of this year, the lien of keeper of garage. Every keeper of a garage and every person keeping vehicles shall have a lien upon a vehicle for the amount that may be due for towing, storage, recovery, and care, like repairs, um, for a vehicle. If the vehicle has a security agreement or other securing money agreement, basically, if there's another lien on the vehicle from a bank, then the maximum charges is $500. So if you are trying to do this for a late model vehicle that has a bank loan on it, the most you're going to get out of this is $500. doesn't matter what you sell it for. You can only keep $500. You have to send the rest to the lien holder. However, in a storage lien, if it's more than $500, the person make a reasonable attempt to notify the secured party and give written notice by certified mail. So there are different steps if there's a lien holder. However, if you're a licensed towing company, then you can charge your regular normal towing fees. You can't jack them up. You still have to give written notice to the lien holder and give them an opportunity to pay the storage fees or the towing fees. The keeper shall be entitled to a lien against any proceeds remaining after satisfaction of all prior liens. So, let's say you have a vehicle that's worth 10000 You have towing storage fees on it for, let's say, $1,000. And there's a bank loan on it for 8000 Well, you get to keep 500 You have to give 8000 to the bank. And then you have a lien against the proceeds and may maintain possession until those charges are paid. Any lien is not attached to any personal property. So if there's something in the vehicle, you have to return it to the owner and not make it part of the sale. If there's a combination of vehicles, truck and trailer, camper, then you can recover against both of those, but it has to be an attached vehicle. What else goes on the application? Well, the mechanic or storage name, the company holding the vehicle, address, your EIN number, your employee identification number, company telephone number, state, zip, address where the vehicle is held if it's different from the regular address. DMV fills out this part. You follow the steps. You sign the application and affidavit of compliance to the buyer, they turn this in to get a title. Check the applicable box to indicate what you plan to do with the vehicle. Sell it, purchase it in my name, or it's non-repairable. And you can decide which one you want to do. Be aware that when you send this Virginia mechanics lien package in, they will highly scrutinize it. They're going to audit this to make sure it's legitimate. They're going to make sure you're not just getting titles for vehicles that you didn't actually tow or store or fix. So this is a very good example of a storage lien or mechanics lien process that you can use as a reference. We'll have other videos for other states. But this is a good representation. Typically, what you have to do is get the prior owner information notify the parties, hold an auction, and turn it into the DMV. There are almost always time periods required. 10 days for this, 30 days for that. Make sure you abide by them. Sometimes there's minimum and maximum. Sometimes you have to hold it for a minimum of 30 days, but you might have to start the process within 90 days of the bill being due. They don't want you sitting on a car for years, racking up storage fees, and hiding the car from the owner and then mechanics leaning the car. So make sure you know what the time requirements are in your state before you start this because 
if you, let's say, get the, um, if you get the vehicle record and you don't start the process soon enough, you might be out of luck because the clock's going to start ticking from this or from whatever records you have, or re whatever receipts or invoices you have. If you have any questions about mechanics liens or storage liens, you can reach us at our website, cartitles.com. We'd be glad to be of assistance.